Rabbi, is it true? The man Jesus has risen from the dead? Asked Simeon, bursting into the humble dwelling. Judah looked up from the Torah scroll he was studying. Yes, Simeon, it appears to be so. I have spoken with several who claim to have seen him alive again after witnessing his crucifixion with their own eyes. But how can this be? Is he truly the Messiah we have been waiting for? Judah set down the scroll and stroked his beard thoughtfully. Many are saying he is the fulfillment of the ancient prophecies. Even some among the Pharisees and Sadducees are whispering that perhaps we have made a terrible mistake in condemning him. Just then, there was a commotion outside and urgent knocking at the door. Simeon unlatched it to find a breathless young man, eyes wide with excitement. Come quickly, the Galileans Peter and John are preaching in the marketplace, proclaiming that Jesus is the Christ and that all must repent and believe in his name for the forgiveness of sins. A large crowd is gathering. Simeon and Judah exchanged glances, then grabbed their cloaks and hurried out the door. As they approached the busy square, they could hear a voice rising above the din, boldly declaring the gospel of Jesus. Pushing their way through the throng, they spotted Peter, one of the chief disciples, standing atop an overturned cart. His companion John stood nearby, nodding in agreement. Men of Israel, hear these words, Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with mighty works and wonders and signs that God did through him. As you yourselves know, this Jesus, delivered up according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed by the hands of lawless men. But God raised him up, loosing the pangs of death, because it was not possible for him to be held by it. Peter gestured passionately as he spoke, his voice carrying across the square. Many scoffed at his words, but others listened intently, heads cocked in curiosity. Judah noticed several faces he recognized, a few members of the Sanhedrin, as well as some Greek god who often attended synagogue. Peter continued, This Jesus God raised up, and of that we all are witnesses, being therefore exalted at the right hand of God, and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit. He has poured out this that you yourselves are seeing and hearing, let all the house of Israel therefore know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. At this, cries went up from the crowd. What shall we do? Brothers, how then shall we be saved? Peter raised his hands for silence. Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promises for you and for your children and for all who are far off, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to himself. With many other words he bore witness and continued to exhort them, saying, Save yourselves from this crooked generation. And those who received his word were baptized. About three thousand souls added to their number that day. Judah and Simeon watched in amazement as men and women came forward to be immersed in the waters of the nearby pool. The faces of the baptized shone with joy, many lifting their hands to the heavens in praise. As the sun began to set and the crowds dispersed, Judah caught Peter's eye and approached him. I am Judah, a teacher of the law. Your words have pricked my heart today. Who is this Jesus that inspires such devotion? Is he really the Messiah spoken of by the prophets? Peter smiled broadly, placing a hand on Judah's shoulder. Come. Let us find a quiet place to talk. There is much to tell. Over the next hours and days, Judah and Simeon met often with Peter, John, and other followers of the way, as the Jesus movement came to be known. They learned of Jesus' life and teachings, witnessed the undeniable power of the Spirit working among the believers, and watched in awe as wonders and miracles were performed in His name. Any doubts they had harbored melted away as they saw the gospel transforming lives. It wasn't long before they both chose to be baptized themselves, casting their lot with this ragtag band of Jews and Gentiles united by their radical faith in Jesus as the Messiah. As educated men, Judah and Simeon were soon looked to as leaders, expounding the scriptures to show how they pointed to Jesus. The church in Jerusalem grew by leaps and bounds, meeting daily in the temple courts and gathering in homes to break bread and fellowship together. They shared everything in common, selling their possessions to give to any who were in need. Despite the increasing threats and persecution from the authorities, their joy was infectious, 
and the Lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved. One evening, as the believers gathered in an upper room, there was an urgent knock at the door. James, the brother of Jesus, answered it to find a Greek man, perspiration beating on his forehead. I must speak to Judah and Simeon, he said breathlessly. I bring news from Antioch. Judah stepped forward. I am Judah and this is Simeon. What is your news, brother? The Greek man clasped Judah's hands earnestly. My name is Lucius. I have traveled from Antioch with an urgent request. Word has reached us of your preaching and the spread of the way. Some of our own people have become believers and the church is growing, but we are untaught and in need of guidance. I beg of you, come to Antioch and help us understand the teachings of Jesus. Judah and Simeon looked at each other, then to Peter and James. There were tears in the eyes of the Greek man Lucius, and his request came from a sincere heart. After conferring together, Judah addressed him. We have heard of the Spirit's work in Antioch. It is right that you should have teachers to build you up in the faith. Simeon and I will come to you in Antioch and stay for a time to instruct and encourage you. Lucius nearly collapsed with relief. Thank you. The brethren will rejoice at this news. We shall eagerly await your arrival. And so Judah and Simeon bid farewell to the church in Jerusalem and set out for Antioch. When they arrived, they found a city alive with gospel activity, as Jews and Gentiles alike came to faith. The Antioch believers welcomed them with open arms. Over the next year, the two rabbis taught them, answering their questions, interpreting the scriptures, and demonstrating a life of following Jesus. The church was strengthened and grew in numbers. Judah and Simeon helped appoint elders to lead them and established the Antioch congregation on a firm foundation. When it came time for them to return to Jerusalem, the Antioch church wept at their departure but overflowed with gratitude. Judah's final exhortation to them was one he would repeat to many churches. We proclaim him, admonishing every man and teaching every man with all wisdom, so that we may present every man complete in Christ. For this purpose also we labor, striving according to his power, which works mightily within us. The Jesus movement spread like wildfire, radiating out in all directions from Jerusalem and Judea through the witness and work of people like Peter, James, Judah, Simeon, and many other unsung heroes of the faith. In city after city, town after town, the first century world was turned upside down by these followers of the way and their message of a crucified and risen Messiah. Within their lifetimes, through the missionary journeys of Paul and others whose names are lost to history, churches would be planted from Jerusalem to Rome and beyond, into Africa, Asia, and Europe. This ragtag band of fishermen, tax collectors, prostitutes, Pharisees, and paupers, empowered by an unquenchable, otherworldly joy, would defy all odds to take the gospel to the ends of the earth. But that movement, which today numbers over two billion adherents, nearly one-third of the world's population, began with a few dozen frightened disciples huddled in an upper room, devastated by the crucifixion of their teacher. All of their hopes and dreams had perished with him on that cross, until the most astonishing news in human history rocked their world and changed it forever. The tomb was empty. The man Jesus was alive. With that electrifying revelation, the greatest story ever told had begun. And Judah, Simeon, Peter, James and the rest would spend the remainder of their days proclaiming it. Through times of miracles and wonders, persecutions and martyrdom. Jesus Christ, Son of God, crucified, risen and coming again in glory. No force on earth could stop this gospel of grace. The adventure was just beginning.